Cars like this, a Moda E5, are going to become a more and more common sight on UK roads. That's because this is a battery electric vehicle. Now, the hybrid and EV market has grown in terms of new car registrations over the last few years. For the aftermarket, that presents something of a question. Do garages continue servicing only ICE vehicles? Or do they look into the EV and hybrid market to increase their reach, especially with more and more of these coming through the new car channels? Analyzing data provided by the SMMT, we can see that registrations of new hybrid and electric vehicles have rocketed since 2019. While hybrid growth has been slower, this is due to the technology being somewhat popular before this period. However, hybrid registrations have increased by 166.1%, while plug-in hybrids have improved by 377.9% since 2019. But with more and more battery electric vehicles being bought to the market by car makers, growth has been exceptional. Since 2019, registrations are up 909.2%. While hybrid and EVs only make up a small percentage of the car park, around 7.7% at the end of 2023, the numbers are growing year on year. More than 800,000 of these cars were registered in 2024. Internal combustion engine deliveries have been on a roller coaster ride and their yearly sales have declined, with a spike in 2023 due to the end of the supply chain crisis. However, hybrid and EV registrations have been in constant growth. With the number of used hybrid and electric models constantly rising as well, and these models likely to find their way into independent workshops, these cars will be around for some time to come, especially with government intervention in the marketplace. If the government and other bodies have their way, then um, as of 2030, 2035, um, it, it, I mean, it's already a growing market. Um, and it will make it will continue to be a growing market. It's only now we're seeing um, EVs coming onto the second-hand market in real numbers, um, and they've become a lot more affordable, and they they are going to last quite well as well. They're proving to last very well. So the number of electric vehicles on the roads in the UK is increasing, but does that mean garages need to be considering today whether they're taking them in? for service maintenance repair work? And if so, what should be considered? The technology is quite different to internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, the training that a lot of workshop owners um, had around motor vehicles was some time ago and predates the high voltage systems that you're seeing on modern vehicles today. So worried is probably a bit, little bit more, a little bit strong, but what we'd certainly like um, workshop owners to consider is the opportunity that these vehicles present well or, or well actually electric vehicle servicing and and for technicians to get into the park is is highly crucial because even though uh i think the uh the rain or actually the amount of electric vehicles that you have in in uk right now is 2.5 million so out of the total car park is not that many but you have to understand that this is this is appearing rapidly so therefore, getting into it now is crucial uh, instead of later. Because later on, a lot of people have let, made a lot of mistakes. Uh, and many of those mistakes have been made because you didn't in, get any training. You weren't informed about uh, how it worked. Uh, you basically just looked up these in, this information online. Um, and I know it does take time to attend these training classes. Uh, and, and it can be quite confusing because it is basically just a computer on wheels. Uh, but 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 it is still moving around and it does belong to the automotive technicians to repair these cars. I think workshops should absolutely be considering EV repair with the growth of the EV market. Um, if, if workshops aren't looking at um, working on EVs, they're not going to remain relevant for very long. Um, so it's absolutely important for them to start looking at the training and all the infrastructure to be able to work on EVs. Otherwise, I think at some point in the future, they're going to struggle for work, for sure. But what about garages that are actually conducting servicing and repair work on electric vehicles? Well, to find out a bit more, I'm heading down to the EV workshop in Hearn Bay, Kent, to ask them how they found the market since they started working on this new powertrain technology. Um, it started off quite slow, as I'm sure you can imagine. We uh, lent quite heavily on the traditional stuff. Um, but the last, 
I would say year 18 months in particular, it's really, really taken off. And we're seeing several a week at least um, for sort of more than just servicing, you know, high voltage repairs, other repairs on the 12 volt side and things like that. So specifically talking about servicing, it's much more straightforward. Obviously you haven't got um, engine oil and um, I mean, you do have a reduction gear, so there is transmission oil of a sense, but that's not usually part of a routine service unless it's requested or there's a symptom associated with that. But general servicing, I mean, you've got a pollen filter, obviously screen wash, your usual tyre pressures, brake check, suspension check, lubricating door hinges, things like that. Um, but it's much quicker and easier should, for a routine service um, and cheaper for the customer as well. If you're considering getting into hybrid and EV service and repair, you will need to undertake training. These are a very different beast to traditional petrol and diesel engines underneath all this black plastic. But how important is that training to make sure that you're able to service these correctly and to stay safe? It's essential. They're a very different beast. Um, you know, when even when thinking about brake bleeding, the brake bleeding procedures can be hugely different. Um, there's several different types of liquids, cooling circuits that are found on these vehicles. Um, in some instances, specialist types of cooling being required and coolants being required. It's it's a, it's a it's a different beast. So, you know, even starting from understanding the lingo through to high voltage work repairing high voltage batteries um training is an absolute necessity throughout plus a lot of ev drivers are pretty knowledgeable there were a lot of them are the early adopters and so i think it's very important that people understand what they're talking about you know there's a there's a, there's a lot in the motor trade that don't drive evs on a regular basis and driving them is is different and i think it's important if we're going to attract these customers into the aftermarket that these customers who are in general knowledgeable about their vehicles are confident that the technicians and the staff working in the the garages understand their vehicles and in turn understand their requirements and um, uh, you know uh, leading to them being confident enough to bring their expensive vehicles into the workshop. As the UK government pushes battery electric vehicle sales car makers are going to do the same especially as they're looking at emissions regulations not just in the UK but in Europe. Therefore we could see a decline in the number of petrol and diesel models available to customers in the coming years. But does that mean increased work for garages when it comes to hybrid, plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicle maintenance? As they're filtering down to, to us independents coming out of warranty, we're seeing more and more. You see the stats, the, the new sales of EVs are increasing year after year. Um, and obviously when them vehicles come out of warranty, uh, independents are going to have more more requests from customers to undertake this sort of work so um yeah it's inevitable really um i know at the moment they just make up a fraction of the vehicles that are on the road but as more and more come out of warranty and move away from that main dealer circuit then there's going to be uh, an abundance of evs in looking for independence to do the maintenance on them it is coming the opportunity is growing um and there are there are clearly differences around the vehicle that that can present opportunities um some of those is that electric vehicles are typically much heavier than standard vehicles a, a tesla model s is is two tons and um, with that brings wear elements that are that are greater than you'll find on a standard vehicle despite the different powertrain these are still cars this one still has four wheels windscreen wipers doors, wing mirrors, you name it, everything I need to get around town. And that's where servicing these things comes in because they have wearable items. You will have to replace the tires, the brakes, the 12 volt battery under the bonnet, but you may need special knowledge or tooling to complete those jobs.
each of these vehicles does have a low voltage system as part of their makeup, um, which will typically include a 12 volt battery. So the 12 volt battery is playing um, a mixed role um, in electric vehicles. It's not just cranking the the uh, internal combustion engine. So the 12 volt battery is is managing all of those low voltage systems, including lights, heating, the touch stone, the touch screen display. Um, as well as the door locks and the alarm. Um, it also powers the vehicle's onboard computer and diagnostic systems, and it does provide a function to the starting of the vehicle. So when you first start the vehicle, those low voltage systems are engaged before the 12, before the high voltage system starts. There are still serviceable items such as the steering suspension, which is absolutely crucial. Um, you need to be able to check all the steering suspension for wear and tear. Um, obviously, EVs have regenerative braking, so again, it's really important to check on the brakes because um, even though obviously the, the cars still use the brakes, there's definitely um, some argument that the brakes, um, you know, particularly when the regenerative braking is being used, the brakes can get a little bit underused, if you like, so the discs can become rusty and, um, you know, need a bit of attention. And then the cooling system. So obviously EVs have, um, you know, quite um, specific cooling systems for the battery. So they need to be checked and maintained as well. So whilst they certainly need some specialist training for the high voltage battery, there are still serviceable items that the, the, the general garage can check and, and maintain. Well, thermal management is crucial simply because the battery pack has to operate uh, under the right circumstance, on the right temperature. The, um, the different ways of cooling down and heating up a battery pack uh, and everything else that goes around in a electric vehicle. But the AC system slash heat pump system, which we are seeing, um, does give you that cooling and heat inefficiency. We have to remember that we're looking at a normal AC system. A lot of people do know how they work, but electric vehicle um, the importance of this is much, much higher because whatever happens in the cabin, whether it's warm or cold, the car doesn't really care. Uh, what's, what's most important is, is that the battery pack has the right temperature. So the, uh, the practice is that first it cools or heats out the battery pack, and then second, it looks at, can I actually accommodate the passenger uh, in the vehicle? When it comes to heat pumps, that's way different. Not all electric vehicles has a heat pump. Um, and when it comes to heat pump, that's really when we're talking about thermal management, because just like a heat pump in a house, um, we see it reversing the flow, meaning that we can actually utilize the fact that we work with high and low pressure. When I say reverse the flow, that's not exactly right. I'm re meaning redirecting the flow. That also means that you have 10 times or up to 10 times more tubes in your heat pump system, which... To a certain degree, is great from an efficiency standpoint, but from a, a service standpoint and um, the way you have to understand the system, uh, it's way more complex. And when it comes to tooling, the right tools have to be used. If not, it could be very dangerous. You will have the, the requirement for insulated tooling. Some insulated tool, well, all insulated tooling to be um, called thousand volt safe have to be to a certain standard. Um, and there's a couple of different standards um, that are um, that, that are used, um, and and most and that that's fairly obvious. So this is the bright orange, bright yellow type tooling. The only thing I would say with um, insulated tooling, particularly insulated tooling that has uh, mechanical um, mechanisms like an insulated ratchet, insulated torrent, that sort of thing. Um, the insulation, if you have to repair it and you have to break the insulation, it's no longer insulated. So there is an added complication because it's insulated. Um, obviously, if the insulation is damaged, then there's a, a, a possibility that it won't do what it's supposed to do. So the hybrid EV market is going to grow, that there is no doubt. And with the government banning the sale of new petrol and diesel cars from 2030 onwards, more and more hybrid, electric and battery electric vehicles are going to take to roads. If you're considering getting into EV and hybrid servicing, it's a good time to get ready, get trained and make sure that you're prepared when those vehicles eventually do start coming into the garage. Otherwise, there's a potential to miss out to those that are trained. We cannot get away from the fact that battery electric vehicles are coming. 
they're being regulated in and they are already on the roads. So therefore, it's best to be prepared rather than wait and see what happens.